So right here, you can see I have lots of beautiful primula. The problem is that the buttercups are taking over. So that's a bit of gardening I've got to do is weed out the buttercups so that the primula can continue to blossom and bloom and flourish. Isn't that right, pup? These are some aspects of gardening with nature. You want aspects of nature to thrive, but you want the diversity as well. So the buttercups can go somewhere else. I don't mind them elsewhere, but my primula bed is being overwhelmed by buttercups. So I'm gonna have to weed them all out. Weed out the uh, buttercups so that the primula can thrive. Walking into the garden here, this Catonia aster I planted as a seedling slip. I mean, it was tiny, a little thing there. And uh, that was 10 years ago. And look at it, full of berries. But again, I want a weed underneath so that the plant can thrive. So when it's blooming, the pollinators have access to the pollen and it's prolific so that the leaves, so if things grow up through it and cover the leaves, they won't have as many blooms and they won't have as many berries. So that's why I weed underneath what well, looks like it needs it. Over here, this is underneath a fig tree. That is uh, when my cousin died eight, nine, 10 years ago, she had this beautiful white hellebore and I dug it up and divided it. And one of them I placed here. So that's been here 10 years. And the fern has been here for about that. But underneath there, you'll see, okay, there's a buttercup, but I'll be weeding that out. Look at the bluebells are all coming up. So the bluebells are beginning to blossom. And there's, can you move your tail? Inca, can you move? Come on, good girl. That right there, this is a primula that I planted last year. It was a tiny seedling, tiny baby. So these are under this fig tree, which the figs are, these figs won't um, ripen, obviously. So they all ripen on the new growth is how figs work. But so this entrance, you know, is different from 10 years ago. Look, Brindle's found an apple to eat for breakfast. And then we come up into the garden through this old gate and over to the vine house. All along here are spring flowering bulbs and plants. You can see there's primula one, two, there's a whole series of primula, primula which I'm hoping will self-sow. Then there's hellebores. I've been planting them in here. This is euphorbia here. So this is um, columbine or uh, people call it nanny's bonnet. More um, hellebores. Those are the thistles that are decorative thistles. I think I'm gonna be digging those out and putting them somewhere else. This is a bit of honesty. This bed had a real weeding out recently. And hopefully we haven't decimated too many of the honesty because I'm a big fan of honesty. This is the seed head of honesty, but it's a biannual. And then these are, birds have been eating these. The seeds are all gone now. So I can prune this back. What I tend to do is prune the stuff back and throw them at the back of the wall or in the bed and then remaining seeds can grow. So more hellebores, they'll all be pruned back. And look, more primula in here. This was here to keep things from falling over. This, so this can actually, I could probably remove this. It was so when we were mowing, the lawn mower wouldn't mow the seed heads. So there's more primula all the way through here. So they're all beginning to show their faces. This is a bit of Angelica. Angelica is lovely. It's in the family, in the carrot family, 
So it's related to cow parsley. I think I'm gonna be moving this plant to another location though, because this is the tank where I feed the fish and the fish are in, but it's a bit too shady for it. And then of course, there's my beautiful vine house. This bed has been getting some weeding as well. No, no, leave the weed pile. I was doing some cutting and weeding. She's just, no, leave it. Leave it. You're spreading it everywhere. <laughs> oh. Anyway, that's a little bit of a garden tour. It's a beautiful, beautiful misty morning. You can see the layers of mist in the distance. some blue sky. I love this bird feeder. The only problem is the crows and the pheasants, the big birds, can get to it as well. So I've just filled it and I put the roof back on. So there's lots of lovely stuff. But what I'm going to do, these are your standard hanging baskets. And I'm hoping that attached with the quick ties, they can prevent the crows and pheasants from jumping up here and eating it. Now, they might be able to shake the feeder and a lot of food will go down on the bottom but hopefully these will prevent the crows, magpies, pheasants, the bigger birds from eating the seeds. There's plenty out there. We still have loads of halls, um, rose hips, uh, all kinds of things. Are you coming to help too, Kat? Are you coming to help me secure the bird feeder? It'll also make it so that uh, these guys won't be able to jump up so easily to scare birds, but they tend not to. Yeah, look at you, kitty, kitty. Anyway, I'm gonna put this together and see uh, how it'll work. It takes a few hands to do this, so it's annoying. They're too small. I need to get a third and a fourth one so that it can wrap around this. So that's very annoying. Because see, there's big enough gaps for the small birds to perch on this and go in. They can fly in, perch. So I need to go and get two more. But see, if I attach them with the quick ties on the top, I can then open them up to put the food in the roof. But I only have two. Well, you know what? I'm going to put it up anyway. And um, this way, birds can, um, oh, this is not gonna work. I need two hands. Two hand wonder. There we go. There we go. Okay. So if I do this temporarily, then the, um, it'll, Bird, the small birds will get used to it so that when I finally put the three, the other two on, one here and one here, they'll be used to it. I wonder how long it'll last before the crows find it and tear it off. Hopefully, I need to get two more of those hanging baskets. And I've got to remember this summer where I got them. Oh, I think I know where I got them. I think I got them down in um, Callan. So I'll have to go down there and find two more. Ah. Anyway, good ideas always seem to have to develop into doing the right thing. <laughs> I'll leave these here and see how they work.
Well, the last chance this year for the flock to graze the long acre. After that, the snowdrops and bluebells and crocus leaves will come up and they'll be eating those. So, I'm gonna open the gate and they're gonna charge up and down the long acre. Come on, girls. <laughs> they're not charging. <laughs> come on, girls. Woo! Come on. Come on, girls. They want to go in. No, you're not going up there. You're going to be grazing the long acre. Come on. <laughs> they had their meal a little while ago. Well, no, it's a couple of hours. Probably more than that. And they uh, aren't very hungry. Surprise, surprise. Java, leave it. Maya, Inca, leave it. Come on, girls. Come on. Look, delicious grass. There we go. There we go. See, yummy. Now they're beginning to think. They're slip sliding in the mud. Big tractor coming along the road. Java, no, Inca, leave it. Java, leave it. No. No. Inca, no. Java, leave it. Good boy. Come here. You're just to behave now, okay? And you were bold. Don't train him wrong. Good boy. Leave it. Leave it. Java, leave it. Having a nice munch. Yeah, you behave. Java, no. Leave it. Good boy. Leave it. Leave it. Well, they're a bunch of idiots on the other side not realizing they're missing what they're missing. Java, no. Good boy. boy. come this way, good boy. Inca, you behave. My phone's battery is about to die. So I don't know how long I'll have to video. Woo, it is mucky. Oh, you were being such an idiot. You were such a stupid sheep. Going the wrong way. There we go.